Howdy, this is Kevin Smith coming at you live from uh, Smith & Sons Coffee and uh, here at the coffee shop. I got the wildest one to uh, talk to you about today. This is going to be a very witchy little segment, but it needs to be spoke about. So here we go. It's going to be fun. I'll start over here. And what we're talking about today is uh, symbols. We're talking about symbols and idols. So I'm reading here in the Bible, and once again, just to recap, Kevin Smith, um, uh, have CTE, a brain damage from football. I learned how to re relearn how to speak a few years back, and uh, I know so much crazy shit. I'd like to just get it out there. You know why not, right? Because uh, hidden knowledge is good for nobody. So I'm reading here in the Bible. I'm rereading the Bible because I, I want to know really what it says, uh, and I want to read it after of going through all the schools that I've been through, uh, I've done, uh, I've been married to a very, a spiritual person who, uh, studied all of the, uh, occult mysteries and reading the Bible, knowing those mysteries makes you interpret it very much differently. So I just want to jump into the crazy symbols and such that we're going to be covering because those are fun. But idols first, right? Let's jump in here. So here we go. We're, in, we're still in Genesis. I'm going to have so many videos by the time I'm done with this darn thing. So uh, let me just put uh, the camera on something here that might be considered an idol. I don't know. Cool ass uh, crocodile I cut. It's a fire opal crocodile I cut there on my saw. So, and Laban went to Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the two mid-servants tent, but he found them not. Then he went out into uh, Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them into the camel's furniture and sat upon them. And, Le and Laban searched all the tent but found them not. And then earlier we have uh, another passage talking about uh, idols and uh, uh, how they were stolen and, and, and hid from this guy. So earlier it talks about stealing them. Here it talks about hiding them from the guy because... You know, it's not really godly to be worshiping idols. So, you know, here's some cool croc, right? He's neat. He got kind of a smile on him. And then we got, we got over here, we got, we got a, a smiling, a real happy smiling uh, uh, snake head, like a, or possibly a turtle head, whatever you want to look, you know? Love that guy. He's cute. I'm gonna lift him up here. Is he an idol? Would I want to like worship this fucker? No, a cute snake. I ain't a snake worshiper, no. Uh, let's roll over here, right? Because we got some other fire opal stuff over here. So we'll roll over here. And we got, what we got over here? We got this guy. This is like a reptoid alien head, right? So we got a reptoid alien head here. Oh, he's smiling. He's smiling. I love, he makes me smile. The other one makes me smile. This kitty makes me per no, it's, it makes me smile. I got a little, a little cat here. And, and then here's the doorway to destiny, we call this piece, right? Which is, which is kind of two bells or doorways. So is that really a doorway to destiny? I don't know. This gets interesting when you're talking about religion. I read a book in college. Um, I believe it was called The Sacred and Profane. But anyways, I'm not sure. I might have got two books mixed up there. But talks about... Uh, talks about things being keys or doorways to spirituality. So I could sit here and maybe I could meditate, and look into the stone because they are translucent a bit and uh, think some really cool thoughts. That's neat. That's great. I'm not worshiping it. I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, mighty fucking whatever I carved, you're so great. So in the Bible, we have these dudes worshiping this stuff and worshiping things gets interesting. Because, you know, idol worship is putting life into something that maybe doesn't have it. And in doing so, you can put a demon into it. You have to be careful. There are angels and there are demons. Angels and demons are not dudes per se. Those would be UFOs. They are spirits. And when you learn the occult and magic, you learn how things work in the world. And how they really work. And that's how things really work. So... Let's dive into some, some interesting stuff that you may think is evil or you may not. And it was really hard to draw some of these symbols. Oh, my God. So, yeah, like these guys make me happy, right? Uh, they really make me happy. 
This dude does. I smile him. Drawing this shit. Oh, man. I dropped my pen four times. I had to draw it six times. And it's just not good. It's kind of evil. I'll try not to move the phone too much. Uh, let's start with this here. I got a few different symbols to hit. In my earlier videos, I did discuss uh, the uh, unspeakable name of God, which is yod heh vav -Hey, and, and and what that means and how that relates to an atomic structure and how that relates to man and woman, male and female being, the nature of, of God, divine light, and all this other stuff. So let's jump into some of the symbols that mean this and what they mean. So let me zoom in here for you. Let's go to the good one first. We got uh, the swastika, right? This was a Hindu swastika. I like this one because it has the planets in there. Uh, I didn't really read online really about this this being a symbol as much a lot of evil shit about it but it doesn't matter this is the this is the symbol of uh, how the uh, solar system works oh that was cool see what i mean that evil fucker just tried to put himself over top of the solar system i left my cooler on it's damn hot tell you what so here we got the solar system and see how it whirls always the world of creation spinning the same way like atoms always plus and minus you know you you don't take it the other way. That's how you get to the evil part. Here's also a swastika with the little feet. I like the feet because it shows it running this way. I love that. And then here you go, evil, you fucker. You wanted to come on top of that one and you get it for your, you get your minute here. Uh, this is a cross of the solar system corrupted, right? So we got uh, good fortune because, you know, across the solar system, how the solar system works, it's, it's how the seasons work. Now, in the book of Enoch, he describes being taken up by UFOs called Watcher Aliens, and he comes up with the seasons. I believe he came up with this sort of cross or his descendants, and this is why. It's just the world of the solar system. So, that, that fucker, uh, ah, what the hell was his name? With the little mustache, Hitler, that little, that little bastard. Uh, he studied the same shit that I did, along with Crowley, Alistair Crowley, and some other fuckers that are evil. Yeah, So I, I wouldn't want to try to take stuff, and I'll show you how you can do it in a minute when we get to these other pages. So they take this, they take the solar system, and they put it on its head, headed down to Earth. So now we're not spinning, we're putting the solar system down to Earth. Also, they'll draw it the other way and they'll spin the solar system backwards. So, it's not so good, it's evil. And we know all associated with that, and I don't even wanna look at that shit anymore. <laughs> hey, later on that one, right? <laughs> we'll keep this going, because I, I was hard to draw, I liked that one there. Oh man, this is a fun one, right? Oh, shoot, okay. The cross. The cross is not a symbol of Jesus' death, unless you really want it to be. In my earlier uh, things, uh, and, and explicitly testified by Jesus in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, let me show my book. Shoot. Okay. Um, in my book here is the entire translation of the Dead Sea Scrolls, Seeds in the Wind. And... Why that's important is, is it fills in the gaps of the Bible and makes you understand all this stuff in a different light or a different way. And you get one test, life or death. One test, life or death, angelic mobilization. Angels help us to live, move, breathe. They control the elements. They are the elements. So here we go. Getting into the symbols of it. So this is a symbol the cross is an ancient symbol, predates Christianity by a lot, and it's a symbol of the solar eclipse, like what we just had. Some of you may have noticed during the eclipse, you will see a cross in the sky when the sun and the moon interact, which is just so cool, right? Depends uh, on like when they cross, but I did a video on that. Uh, you can see on my channel by itself with like some really cool uh, pictures I snagged off the internet or whatever and music and stuff. So anyways, when those two meet, you have the meeting of the sun or the masculine uh, projection and the moon, which is feminine projection. And together they make, oops, watch out, Bible, divine light. So cool. I love it when I hear the word divine light. What is divine light? 
Yeah, it, it reminds me of like uh, well, that damn that darn movie with Corbin Dallas. Yeah, that's cute. Anyways, divine light is a symbol of the cross. Very interesting. It's why some some crosses will have a, a circle in the middle, representing the sun and the moon meeting on the eclipse. Uh, this is actually a, a native cross. So very cool. <clears throat> Let's go to the bad version. Not so good. Oh, this is a good version. Shoot, I almost crumbled on the good version. What the hell is wrong with me there? Bad version. Here we go. An inverted cross. An inverted cross would mean that the divine light is coming from earth. Uh-oh. That's a symbol of Satan. I wouldn't even say that's a symbol of demons. That is a symbol of Satan because he's always trying to claim that throne, right? He don't want to be a demon. He want to be the boss or she. <laughs> we'll get to that later. St. Peter asked to be crucified upside down, believing not to be worthy. And so to a lot of Catholics, it represents death or not saying you're not worthy in dying. I don't know. Anybody gets crucified is horrible. Personally, if I was going to be crucified, I'd ask to get crucified upside down too because you die quicker. You wouldn't hang there as long. Okay. So inverted cross symbol of Satan. Death, let's get that shit out of my fucking office right now. Oh my God, I'm starting to feel better. Seriously. Okay, you may think this one's evil as hell, right? Oh man, I tell you what. We had a person, probably one of our friends or somebody, because it drew one of these here underneath a deer. Like the deer was jump, jumping over the star on, on a deer sign on the road down from our hotel. Because we do own a hotel up here in Kernville. So we got this star here. And, uh, Hi. <laughs> And uh, we had to color that shit out. You know, I'm a business owner and I'm not going to write some dissertation on this. Well, the stars upright and the meaning of upright and non upright and all this shit. So. And I, I mean, with this one, that's the same thing. They put it on its head. Not upright. Same with this one. The evil one, they put it on its head. This is the same thing. <coughs> If you see someone, and this is a trip. Okay, this symbol means this. Ready? I'm going to hold the phone, so pretend the phone's not there. This symbol means this. It's Patrick Star. I don't know. Can you see me in the picture? I'm Patrick Star, right? I'm making a star with my body, and my head is here. My hands are here, and my feet are here, just like SpongeBob. And it's the symbol of man. And I, it, it, Okay, in all the text that you read, it's the symbol of man, but it's not. It's the symbol of humanity. Because let's not forget female aspect, female aspect of God, female aspect of creation. The reason for Columbic repulsion is because there's a negative, there's a negative trying to get with that positive in every atom. So let's say it's the symbol of humanity. And in this symbol, this symbol is used the most by witches. Not just good ones. Good ones will use this symbol per se. Bad ones will use it upside down. Now, the good symbol here means the perfection of man. Because my head is reaching to the heavens. I'm ascending my head to the heavens. Can you see me? I'm like, reaching to heavens with my arms spread out. <coughs> I am uniting the five elements within my body. This star represents the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. The pentagram is used to invoke those elements. This has been done in a lot of religions and a lot of religions have inner orders. They have like even Christian religions have inner orders and like the high ups know all this shit, but they don't give you it all for whatever damn reason I don't know I don't want anybody who ever watches any of my videos to know anything else besides you're freaking awesome don't ever take a knee for anybody and no God that's ever created you or anybody else would ever want you to take a knee hell no because that's, a, that's the all father and all mother up there your parents wouldn't want you to take a knee don't take a knee and we don't take a knee for the angels either, do we? We may be in unison with them. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, Jesus Christ explains how 
angels help us to digest our food, angelic mobilization and all this stuff. So awesome. He says in here, you know, there's no way to ever come before the throne of God and the All Father without first knowing uh, the angels of Mother Earth. So it's interesting to me because the Kabbalah teaches you that you must learn the angels of the earth and how they affect you so that you can be awesome, right? Well, uh, it's the same sort of thing here, right? We got the elements, we got spirit, and we're using this symbol to say we're awesome and we're aspiring to be perfect like the Jesus was in all elements. We can invoke angels of different elements. This is how the Kabbalah teaches you. So that you can use those elemental forces to not be an asshole. To teach yourself to not be an asshole. To be a good person. To be the kind of person that, that could get raptured up in a spaceship or something and not be an asshole up there. No one want to hang out with somebody up there as an asshole. So here we go. We got good, yes? We'll keep that one on the good side. This fucker's not so good here. We don't like this one. This is bad. Destruction and manipulation of humans. Fuckers, right? Head of man pointed to earth. Boom. You see that symbol? Get rid of it because it's invoking demonic and evil energy around. You may think this one is, but you really don't understand it. This is, this is the no-no, you know? You don't put it upside down. All of these symbols are corrupted by placing them upside down. Makes sense? Very simple. Very simple in society to see that there are only two tests in this life. Or is what you're doing about life or is what you're doing about death? From the food you eat to the decisions you make. I, uh, fuck. Sorry. I recently lost my son, Logan. December. Passed away. He was 28. And, uh, He lived a hell of a life. I don't know. I just, he's here now. So sorry. I had to jump do that. Cry a little bit. So Logan understood this. It's fucking evil. There's a lot of evil in this world. If you'd like to know who they are and what the hell they're doing, watch my segment called, uh, who are they? And it will blow your mind. Cause they're here today and they're old, old bloodline. So yeah. Uh, had a man pointed uh, to earth in this symbol. Uh-oh. Mankind equals the elements. This symbol is used to call demons. Demons are also elemental by nature. They're fallen angels. And so how do evil witches affect us? Like Crowley, that fuck, and, and uh, sorry about the language. I use a different part of my brain to speak um, because I lost the ability to speak. So I speak with the cussing part of my brain, not the frontal lobe, which I don't even have one anymore. So that uh, football, no good. Um, also elemental. So yeah, you know, Hitler used this symbol, corrupted, put on its side, spinning the wrong way, to invoke energies they really affected a lot of people in a very negative way. Crowley used this symbol and more so the good one to manipulate people. You got to watch out when you study any of this kind of shit. Don't study it from anybody but a book because otherwise people can put you under their will. No, you get all the hidden knowledge and then what? You're taking a knee. We don't take a knee. We don't take a knee ever. So... Watch this symbol, guys. Symbols are interesting. I feel so much better getting rid of that shit. All right. So if I can leave you with anything on this video, I would like to leave you with just the fact that maybe you think you know what's good, what's bad. I don't know bad one. But maybe what's good and what's bad on the floor down there are a little different than what you thought. And really, let me just throw it back to this one, guys, because I've been living for over 25 years for this year. And I'm going to read it to you right now at the end. 
<clears throat> watch your symbols. Watch what symbols that are around you. Watch what symbols you hang on your, your neck. Do they represent life or do they represent death? Remember, you're only told half the truth or even less than that. So I'd like to again read you the last half of the Lord's Prayer kept from the people, which is in the Dead Sea Scrolls spoken by Jesus himself. Here we go. Last half of the Lord's Prayer kept from the people. Our mother which art heart upon earth, hallowed be thy name. Okay, I want to stop. Our mother which art upon earth. His mother, Jesus' mother, was on earth. And she, in uh, the infancy gospel of Thomas, had similar powers as he did. Bloodline, interesting. You know, Jesus' last name was not Christ. So what was his last name? I don't know. (laughs) Is that bloodline still there? I don't know. It's interesting. And I did touch bloodlines, vegetarianism, vegetarianism. in another chapter, another video, if you'd like to see the bloodlines and the vegetarianism one, check it out because bloodlines are interesting. Compare the, that one, vegetarianism, to the uh, who are they video and it'll blow your freaking mind forever. I'll tell you, be talking to people about it. All right, last half of the Lord's Prayer, care for the people. Our mother, which art upon earth, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in us as it is in thee. And thou send us every day thy angels, send them to us also. Forgive us our sins as we atone all our sins and against thee. And don't we atone all our sins against that nature and the earth itself? <laughs> and lead us not into sickness, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the earth, the body, and the health. Amen. And they prayed together with the Magi Jesus to the heavenly father and to the earthly mother. This is taken from the Essene gospel of peace. First translation, which was put under wraps by the churches. And I'm one of a few that are trying to get it out there still. So, awesome, interesting, and let's do this. Let's say, We just invoke the light of the cross. We say, the heaven, the earth, the sun and the moon together. Amen. The light of the cross. And... Ooh, I threw away one of my good symbols. So let's just draw it real quick. I'm sorry for walking around my office so much. Hope this video turned out okay. Freaking cool, though. Let's just do this one here, Star David. Because I threw it on the floor. Well, let's draw a couple triangles. And then, there you go. We're going to say, Ahad ro shak dakto ro shikuro timarasu ahad. So what we're saying there is their permutation is one. They are one. They are one. Just like this symbol, male and female together, this symbol also represents not just as above, so below. It also represents God, the name of God, plus and minus, yod he Adonai. Adonai, my friends. That means uh, I'll catch you later.